All right, I thought I would do a video today on compressors. That was one of the uh, questions on our YouTube channel and the Facebook user group. The main question was, uh, why don't we have more presets in the uh, compressor window here? The reality is you don't really need any more because beyond a few basic settings, it's just not going to matter. I'm a believer that you've got to do your own EQ, your own compressor, and your own mix. But a, a compressor is actually uh, pretty simple. The um, main thing that you have to work with is just a threshold, meaning that your ratio, attack, hold, and release beyond a basic setting from a preset, uh, you don't have to really mess with those. A compressor is strictly dependent on your input level and your threshold level. Meaning that if I was to click uh, compressor here, um, you heard the uh, gain go up 6 dB, by the way. So right now, if uh, let's say that this preset was at minus 15. Okay? It's doing absolutely nothing to my vocal except jacking up the gain 6 dB. So there's no compression, but now I'm 6 dB softer. And now there's no compression and I'm 6 dB louder. Uh, so whoever creates these presets have no idea how loud my vocal is going to be. If I'm extremely loud, then the compressor is going to be over compressing. If I'm extremely low, the compressor will do nothing. So again, it's impossible for a preset to really work well. And it's going to be up to you as an audio engineer to get this right. Take a look here at the vocal setting. Um, it's actually fairly close for me. If I was to get really loud, you'll see six to seven dB of compression going on. And let me get loud with, uh, let me go ahead and turn the uh, gain down. Here's my vocal without compression. And you heard the very first word that I said here um, was kind of barky. Here's my vocal. And without a compressor, that was actually bothersome to my ears, which is, uh, we're all really trained to not like real hard peaks uh, in music. You can read about compression wars all day long in studio mastering. So here, uh, you'll notice that I got about 4 dB of compression on that really loud first word here. And that's what we're trying to control. We're trying to control you know, peaks and loud spots uh, to be more consistent with our softer parts. And the reality is, you know, from a psychology standpoint, we have all been trained over the last 20 years to think that music that is very compressed sounds better. Again, you can read about it on the internet. Um, everything uh, goes through multiple stage of compression. So think about that. How many stages of compression might there be on a guitar uh, recorded in a studio that you hear live on the radio? You're thinking one, two, three. I'm, I think it's more than that. Let's count them. The guitar may be running through a pedal compressor, through a tube amp that is naturally going to compress the sound, into a high-end mic preamp and probably compressor for the audio engineer to track to get good levels to the recording software. So there's three just on input into the recording. And then, of course, it's going to be compressed, possibly during the mix to control the levels. It will definitely be compressed as a whole mix in the mastering process. And uh, finally, the radio station playing it on the airwaves will have a compressor. So that's an example of six stages of compression on just a guitar through the whole process. So you literally see multiple stages of compression all through the process of you listening to a CD on the radio. It's our job as live engineers to do what we can to make our band sound as much like a CD as possible. And without compression, you're never going to get there. If you don't know how to use a compressor, you probably shouldn't. But now that everyone has the access to compressors with new digital technology, you should certainly spend some time learning a, a compressor. For my demo today, I've got a multi-track recording uh, with some vocals that have uh, a few problematic spots. And uh, we're going to play those uh, 15 tracks with Waves tracks live. I've got a basic mix-up. I've got her compressor turned off on her vocal channel. And uh, let's just listen back real quick to um, a rough mix that I've got and listen to her vocal. Well, but he got happy dreams and... He has faith in everything Like heavens I just can't believe it But it gets a little harder to go there anymore And to care when I pretend that I'm aware I'm driving to the Rockies 
All right. So to me, the driving word right here uh, was um, extremely uh, bothersome to me. And it's just way too dynamic. And it uh, jumps out of the mix and it, it hits our ears as something's wrong. Uh, now, live, we're used to that. Uh, everything's wrong in live music if you don't control it. And if you don't have compressors, you're not controlling it. So let's listen to it again and uh, let's watch it with the uh, compressor on. Well, but he got happy dreams and he has faith in everything. Like heavens, I just can't believe it. But it gets a little harder to go there anymore than to care when I pretend that I'm aware. I'm driving to the Rockies with only stars above to follow me in the sky far from the sea. All right, so I thought that was much better. Uh, by the way, that was almost 9 dB of compression, uh, of actual compression on her vocal, and that sounded much better. And, um, you know, a lot of people use words like, oh, I compress 1 or 2 dB. You can't hear 1 decibel of compression. Uh, it's impossible in a mix. So if you are running 1 decibel of compression, you probably shouldn't even bother doing compression. This is a true 9 dB peak in her voice, and you've got to control that. And the only way to do that is to give it, you know, at least four to six decibels of compression so that, you know, even at jumping out at three or four dB, it's more acceptable. So let's take a look. I'm going to um, change the loop. All right, so you could easily see where the uh, peaks were without the compressor and where that uh, were driving was peaking with the compressor. Uh, it's a huge difference. And so uh, there was a little bit of compression across most of her vocals. Um, it wasn't touching any of the uh, softer spots. And that's ultimately what you're going to do. So let's just reiterate here. If you click on the vocal preset, and I'll do it on mine so I don't mess up her settings. If you click on the vocal preset, you're going to be really close on your attack, hold, and release. Don't get bogged down on that right now. Uh, you're not going to use any of the filtering. Just turn it off. Get rid of the gain because you're not going to want to have 6 dB of gain. Uh, get that back to normal. Now, 3, three to 1 ratio is pretty normal. We're going to leave that there. And start out just experimenting with your threshold. And right now, it's compressing everything that I'm doing. So I'm going to relax that some and get this set up to... A little bit of compression when I normally talk, but if I was to get right into the mic and get really loud, you can see that I didn't get much louder because it was really working to keep my loud parts down. So I'm actually touching the mic right now, and I can get really loud, and it's pushing me back nine decibels. As I back off the microphone, uh, you'll hear the, hear the tone change a little bit, but you'll also see that I'm getting one or two dB of compression, and uh, that's probably a pretty good setting for most vocalists. One, two... 3 dB of compression at most during the softer part of the songs. And then if they really, really get into it and get loud uh, like she did right here on this one word, it's going to push that back as much as needed to keep it balanced within the mix. And so again, almost all the settings you can get away with not knowing about except for your threshold. And again, the threshold is completely dependent on its input. If I'm really, really soft and I'm way back off the microphone here, you'll notice that my compressor is really doing nothing. So that preset would be worthless. You're going to have to pull this down to actually start working based on my input level. 
if I'm really, really loud and I'm up on the microphone, you can see the compressor is just killing everything. So you'd want to relax that compressor. So the preset will not do you any good if you don't adjust your compressor. So let's go back and listen to uh, the mix one more time. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and turn on my master compressor. I think that's a, a huge difference, um, what you're hearing without her compressor on and without the multi-band compressor on the master output. Hope you're hearing it on the recording. If you have any questions, let us know on our YouTube channel or come over and visit us on the Facebook user group, Behringer X-Air.